Hello and welcome to Nidhrania YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the game in a nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Beretz and in this video we're going to learn how to play Hoang from Reiner Knizia. This is a re-implementation of his famous Tigris and Euphrates game back from 1997. This one is published by Phalanx. It has slight, different, slight differences from uh, the original version. And all the components in this video are prototype components for the upcoming Kickstarter campaign. You will find the details about the Kickstarter campaign and link to the campaign in the description of the video. And now let's get started. To set the game up, first place one yellow governor tile in each of these seven spaces on the map. These spaces represent the capital cities of the warring states. Then place all the remaining tiles to the back and if you play a two-player game you may decide to shorten the game by randomly removing 24 tiles from the game. Then each player chooses one dynasty and takes all five leaders of the dynasty. Place those leaders in front of you and also place a player screen in front of you but keep the leaders in front of the player screen. Then randomly draw six tiles from the bag and place them behind the player screen. But for the sake of explanation, let me remove that player screen. So this could be those six tiles that you drew from the bag. Then randomly draw additional six tiles from the bag and place them in this area. They represent the merchant tiles in the market area of the game board. The game of Huang represents a period of warring states in an ancient China when seven states were in a period of endless wars. The game is played in turns starting with the first player and then continuing clockwise and on your turn you may perform up to two of the following actions. You may take the same action twice or you may take two different actions. First you may position a leader which means you may, for example, place a leader or move the leader. The second option is to place a tile and potentially gain some victory points from that. The third option is to discard two blue tiles and remove any other tile from the game board. The next option is to discard two green tiles and build a pagoda, which score victory points at the end of your turn. And the final option is to replace tiles in your supply. The game ends when the bag of tiles is empty and then players will compare the scores in the victory point areas. There are four areas, blue, yellow, red and green. White victory points are wild. As I said, you gain victory points by placing the tile, by having the leader of the same color as the pagoda in the area or by winning conflict. And at the end of the game, you sum up the victory points in all colors. And then the color with the lowest number of victory points is your final score. And then the player with the highest, lowest score is the winner. So the first type of action you can take is to position a leader. Your dynasty has five leaders representing five different areas. This is a farmer trader, soldier, governor and artisan. When you position a leader, you can either place the leader on the game board or when it already is on a game board, you can reposition that leader or you can withdraw the leader from the game board and place it back in front of your player screen. When you decide to place or reposition a leader, the following restrictions apply. First, the leader must be placed in an empty space. Second, that empty space must be adjacent to a yellow governor tile. Then, you may never place a leader on a river space. And finally, you may not place a leader in a such a way that it unites two states and leads to a conflict. Two tiles which share a common edge are adjacent. An area of contiguously adjacent tiles and leaders is called a state. As long as the state contains leaders of different colors, everything is peaceful. If there are two leaders of the same color in the same state, a conflict arises. So in order to prevent the conflict, you may not place a leader in a such a way, 
that it unites two states and creates the conflict at the same time. However, you may place a leader in a such a way that it unites two states but doesn't create a conflict, like in this case. The second type of action you can take is to place a tile. To do that, take a tile from behind your player screen and place it anywhere on the game board on any empty space. There are two restrictions. The blue tiles can only be placed on the river and no other type of tiles can be placed on rivers. Then after you place a green tile on the game board, as a bonus, you may take one of the tiles from the market and place it behind your player screen. This is optional, you don't have to do it. After you place a blue tile, if you wish, you may continue placing additional blue tiles, if you have any behind your player screen. And as part of the same action, place it to a space which is adjacent to the previously placed blue tile and you may continue to do so as many times as you want or as many times as you have blue tiles. However, you may not place a blue tile in a such a way that it creates a space for a pagoda, which I'm going to explain a little bit later in the video. And you may also not use this bonus placement if that placement would lead to a conflict. Immediately after placing a tile, the victory point is awarded. If the tile is placed in a state and that state contains a leader of the same color as the tile, the owner of that leader gains one victory point. This is a token for a one victory point and again victory points are kept behind the player screen. If you place the tile in the state and that state doesn't contain the leader of the same color but it contains a yellow governor leader then the owner of that leader would get one victory point of this color. If you place several blue farmer tiles during the same action, for each tile you place, a victory point is gained by the owner of the leader in that state, if there is any. So in this example, those would be two victory points for this dynasty. If you place a tile and you unite two states, and that leads to a conflict because there are two leaders of the same color in the final United State. Then there is no victory point awarded for that tile. However, if by placing a tile no conflict is created, then the victory point may be awarded. In this example, it would go to this dynasty. If the green leader would not be in this state and you would place a tile like this, then the owner of this leader would get a green point. By the way, at any time during the game, if you have five victory points of a particular color, you may exchange them for one token, which also represents five victory points. Then with the next action, you may discard two blue tiles from behind your player screen and return them back to the box and choose any one tile anywhere on the game board and discard that tile back to the game box as well. If you remove the last yellow governor tile, which is adjacent to any leader on the game board, such leader is returned back to the respective player. You can also remove the tile and split one state into two separate states. And if there's any pagoda build, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute, if you remove a tile from under the pagoda, return the pagoda back to the general supply as well. When you take this action and you still have your blue farmer leader in front of you, in front of your player screen, then instead of discarding two blue tiles from behind the player screen, you can only discard one. That leader counts as the second tile, although it still remains in front of your player screen, and then you can perform the action. With the next action, you can build a pagoda. If there is a triangle of tiles of the same color earlier created by any player, you may discard two green tiles from behind your player screen, so you return them back to the box, and then establish a pagoda on that triangle. If the pagoda of that color is available in the general supply, take it from there. If not, you may take it from anywhere else on the game board and reposition it. Similar to previous action, 
if you have your green leader in front of you, in front of your player screen, instead of discarding two green tiles, you may only discard one and perform the action. Pagodas provide victory points at the end of your turn. If you have a leader in the state with the pagoda of the same color, you get one victory point of the corresponding color. So in this case, you would get one white victory point. The special ability of the yellow governor leaders apply as well. So if you wouldn't have your white leader in this state, if this was your leader, you would still get one white victory point for this pagoda. This player, this dynasty would also gain one blue victory point at the end of that player's turn. And finally, the last type of action is replacing the tile from behind your player screen. To do that, take as many tiles as you want from behind your player screen, discard those tiles so you place them back to the box, and draw the same number of tiles from the bag. Again, don't forget that you have all your tiles behind your player screen. At the end of your turn, first collect any victory points from pagodas on the game board, then refresh your tiles by drawing the tiles from the bag until you have six tiles behind your player screen, and if there are fewer than six tiles in the market, replenish the missing tiles by drawing them randomly from the bag. Then it's the next player's turn. Conflicts occur when there are two leaders of the same color in one state. There are two types of conflicts, revolts and wars. Conflict is always part of the current action and only after the conflict is resolved you can go to the next action. So we'll start with revolts. When you place or reposition a leader into a state which already contains a leader of the same color, the revolt occurs. The player placing or repositioning the leader is the attacker, the other player is the defender. To determine the initial strength of the leaders, count the number of yellow governor tiles adjacent to those leaders. So here we have strength 2 for this leader, for two adjacent yellow tiles, and only strength 1 for this leader. Note that this yellow tile contributes to the strength of both leaders. Then, starting with the attacker and then with the defender, each player may increase the strength of the leader by taking the yellow governor tiles from behind their player screen and placing these tiles in front of the player screen. And for each yellow governor tile you use in this way, increase the strength by one. So first, the attacker places all the chosen yellow tiles. So in this example, the attacker would get two additional strength. And then the defender would also do the same. Then the leader with the higher strength wins the revolt. In case of a tie, the defender wins. Then the losing leader must be withdrawn from the map and returned back to the controlling player and placed in front of their player screen. Then the winning player gains one victory point of the corresponding color. And then all the committed yellow governor tiles are returned back to the box. Similar to green and blue leaders, if you have a yellow governor leader in front of your player screen, that leader may also count as plus one strength in the conflict. So in this example, the player would gain one, two, three additional strength. When you place a tile which unites two or more states, which contain leaders of the same color, a war occurs. There is no victory point awarded for the tile that was just placed. Instead, a unification marker is placed on that tile. And note, my prototype copy of the game did not come with the unification token, so I'm using my own one. This one is not included in the game. And now all the conflicts between the leaders of the same color are resolved in one large war. Unlike revolts, in wars, states gain their strength from the red soldier tiles. So here, this state has the initial strength of three, this one strength of two. Note that if the red soldier tile would be used as the unification tile, it doesn't count, so it doesn't provide additional strength to any of the states. 
Now, if this is the player who started the war, so that's the player who plays this unification tile, then starting with the player to the left in the clockwise direction of that player, each player may now commit any number of red soldier tiles from behind their player screen and also they may commit their leader, red leader, if they still have it in front of their player screen. And for each tile and each leader, increase the strength of the chosen state by one. You do that by taking the leader and the tile and place them somewhere next to the game board or close to the state which you are supporting. So in this example, the strength of this state would be increased by one and two. Then the next player may do the same, even if that player is actually not involved in the conflict. And that player may choose again any side of the conflict. So for example, let's increase the strength of this state by two additional strength points. And then finally, the player who placed this unification tile may also do the same thing. So commit any number of red soldier tiles and potentially the red leader and declare the support to one of the warring states. Then the state with the higher strength wins the conflict. In our example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six strength for this state and one, two, three, four, five, six for this state. In case of a tie, the player who placed this unification tile decides which state wins the conflict. So let's say the player who placed this unification tile decides that this is going to be the winning state. First, remove all the red soldier tiles from the losing state or states and also all the conflicting leaders from that state. And again, if the unification tile would be the red soldier tile, do not remove that tile. Now, the players who control the winning leaders of the conflict gains one victory point of that color. So this leader would gain one red victory point. This leader would gain one blue victory point. But now all those soldiers that were involved in this conflict on both sides will eliminate each other in a one-to-one -one ratio. Since there were six soldiers in this state, six soldiers must also be removed from this state. Obviously, the soldier tiles that were committed by players are discarded to the box. Leaders are returned back to their players. And while the soldier tiles from the losing state have been already removed, the winning state must also remove the corresponding number of soldier tiles. If the conflict would look like this, for example, so this state would have the strength of four because of these four soldier tiles, two of them on the map, two as committed soldiers from behind the player screens and this state would have a strength of three from three tiles on the map, then this is the winning state. The strength of the losing state is three, so they have to remove three soldier tiles, but the winning state must also remove three soldier tiles. These two are removed automatically and now the winning state has to remove one additional soldier tile. The victory points are obviously awarded in the same way. Losing leaders are returned back to their players, remove the unification token, and that's the end of the conflict. The game ends immediately when a player attempts to draw a tile from the bag, but the bag is empty. All players now remove their player screens and reveal the victory point tokens they have collected over the course of the game. And there are four categories of victory points, yellow, green, red and blue. These white are wild, so you can allocate them in any way you want. And again, these tokens represent five victory points, these tokens represent one, so we have seven points in red color, eight in green, four in yellow. And after reallocating these white tokens, for example, like this, we have now five blue victory points. And the category in which you have the lowest score, in this example, the yellow category, that's your final score. So in this case, the final score of this player is four. 
compare your final score with the scores of other players and then the player with the highest score is the winner. So for example, if one player would have four victory points, the other would have three, and the last one would have five victory points, this is the winner. In case of a tie, let's say we have two players with the same lowest score, compare the next lowest score, and then the player with the higher score in that category wins the tie. So that's how you play Hoang from Reiner Knizia and Falans games. If you have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can support the channel on the Patreon page or clicking the thank you button under the video. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Beret and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash